This, rather strange looking gadget, is a tiny DIY night vision camera. It's pretty simple to make, and is made from low cost components, so almost anyone, with some basic electronics construction experience, can make one of these things for themselves. Best of all, this simple night vision camera, has its own built-in infrared illumination, so it can work in total darkness. Actually, it is better to describe this little device, as a night vision camera adapter. You see, it leverages a USB-C enabled smartphone, to provide the power and the display capabilities, which greatly simplifies the project. It is a UVC compliant device, so should be compatible with any smartphone that supports the standard. In fact it will even work on most tablets and laptops too. We have a couple of other special camera adapters, this one is a thermal camera, and it can see light in the wavelength range of 7 to 10 microns. This other one is a camera module that is sensitive to ultraviolet light, in the UVA band. It has a wavelength range of about 350 to 400 nanometers. We just kind of figured, that we had a bit of a gap in what we can see with our smartphone, and its adapters. So, we thought we would do something about that. This device doesn't quite close the gap, but it does get us a bit closer to being fully multispectral. So, in this video, we are going to show you how we made this curious little gadget, we will dig into how it works, and look at the actual performance it can achieve. And then, in case you might want to build one for yourself, we are going to show you where you can buy the parts, and even share the 3D files we created. Right, let's crack on with it. On the face of it, it might seem like building a custom night vision camera, would require a very special optical sensor. Fortunately, that is not the case. At its heart, this little contraption uses little more than a basic, entry-level, USB camera module. You see, basic CMOS camera modules can see a lot more than just the visible parts of the spectrum that your human eyes can perceive. These image sensors can see quite deep into the near-infrared part of the spectrum, and even a small way into ultraviolet wavelengths too. If we look at this tiny camera unit, when we unscrew the lens, we can see the CMOS image sensor inside. On the back of the lens unit, we can also see an optical filter, which is used to remove the infrared portions of the incoming light. We are going to remove that infrared filter, and allow our camera to see both the visible and the near-infrared parts of the spectrum. In doing so, we are going to be doubling the wavelengths that this little camera can see. Later, we will add a removable long pass filter, which will allow us to choose if we want to see the whole spectrum, or just the infrared bands. The mini camera we are using for this project, came from the Chinese equivalent of Amazon, called, Taobao. Unfortunately, Taobao is only available here in mainland China, though we did find a few similar camera units on AliExpress, and there are links to those in the description below. This is by no means the first time we have made an infrared night vision camera system. We made one that utilized a cheap $7 webcam, but it was quite limited by its shitty VGA resolution. We also made a 4K version, that included telephoto optics. But, this turned out to be pretty bulky, so now we have decided to have another go, and this time we wanted a version that could be easily carried around. So, we just need to design and print an enclosure, disassemble the camera module, and wire up an infrared LED to a driver circuit. It all sounds pretty simple. So let's get this thing built.
This little camera unit, is a USB video class compliant device, and as long as you have an app that supports this on your phone, it will just work. There are lots of free apps that support these kinds of cameras, but one of the best ones, is called Next Camera, and it doesn't seem to bother you with ads either. I guess that means it might be spying on you. First, we are going to remove the camera's electronics from its enclosure. With this little device, that can be done by simply prising the back panel off, and then unscrewing the lens. Without the enclosure and the lens, the camera suddenly looks very tiny indeed. Inside, is a CH9226 CMOS image sensor chip. This isn't exactly a high-end solution, but it will give 1080p video at 30 frames per second. So probably good enough for this application. This camera uses a standard 12mm lens mount, so if we chose to do so, we could even use one of our telephoto lenses, or even some simple microscope optics, as they all share the same mounting thread. Most of these simple cameras have the infrared filter on the back of the lens unit. It is very easy to break this, and you can see that my clumsy human assistant, managed to chip one corner of the filter when removing it. Now the filter has been removed, we can use this IR flashlight to test the camera. To the camera that is filming this scene, the flashlight appears to have just a dim pink glow, but to our infrared sensitive mini camera, this gives a bright response. Now we are going to cut the USB cable off the camera, and then attach a new one. These USB Type-C connectors, come with an attached PCB that even has pads to allow the CC pins, to be pulled to the correct state to be recognized as an OTG device. In this case, we need to add 5.1 kilo ohm pull-down resistors from both of the CC lines. This is a 500 milliwatt infrared LED. It operates with a peak output at a wavelength of 850 nanometers. We are also going to be using a dedicated constant current adjustable LED driver board, to protect the LED from being overdriven. Here we have put the LED, the driver board and a small slide switch together, and glued the parts into a little module. And here you can now see all the parts of this little gadget, all together. So, all we need to do now is create some 3D geometry for the enclosure. This is the 3D we came up with for this. I can tell you now, there is nothing quite like getting a design, right first time. And this was nothing quite like that experience at all. It seems rather ridiculous to me, that my human assistant managed, to create so many different design options, and yet every single one of them was as ugly as sin. Even a stopped clock manages to be right twice a day. And then we noticed a problem. The LED was bright enough to illuminate the edge of the camera PCB, with enough infrared light, that a shadow of the PCB traces was visible on the CMOS sensor, even though this light was going right through the sensor die itself. What we should have done, was to modify the 3D design, to add a light break between the LED and the camera PCB, and then print out a new enclosure. But, what we actually did, was to add some black electrical tape to the edge of the PCB. Basically, my human assistant was just too lazy to do this job properly. Well whatever, it does kind of fix the problem. And finally, we found this lens kicking around in a desk drawer, we have absolutely no idea where we got this from, but by a complete stroke of luck, it fits perfectly into the LED housing, and does a very good job of collimating the infrared light. Right, enough of the talk, let's see if this thing actually works. One of our viewers has recently pointed out, that our videos are getting quite long these days. So, we figured we would have a very brief intermission to allow our valued viewers, to take a quick break. So here goes.
Since you are still listening, I thought I might take this opportunity to make a small announcement. My human assistant is often pretty busy with his day job, or his family, and even manages to find time to get sick, which all makes scheduling these videos a terrible experience. So, to keep myself busy, when my human assistant is otherwise occupied, I created a tiny channel of my own. This is the place I like to post videos about life, the universe and everything. The language is frequently very colorful, and I can be pretty hard on those that say stupid shit in the comments. So, if you are not the sensitive type, and are not offended by coarse language, then please feel free to drop in, and find out just how depressing I find your little world. There is a link to the channel in the description below. The next video I plan to release, is about nuclear fusion, so you can always subscribe if you want to be notified when that one is released. Anyway, thank you for your time, normal service will now resume. So, here is some interesting footage, that we captured using this infrared camera, and using an IR flashlight for illumination. And here, you can see the inbuilt IR illumination being used, this is without the extra collimating lens. With the lens added, we get a much tighter, and brighter beam of infrared light, but at the cost of a smaller area of illumination. And when outside, this limitation becomes quite obvious. The power that can be taken from the USB, when configured as an OTG interface, is limited to about 500 milliampers, which doesn't buy us a lot of final optical output power. In daytime, viewing the visible and infrared bands together, gives some stunning visual effects. It seems that plants, are incredibly reflective in the near-infrared band. Here, you can see a filter, just like the one we removed from the camera module. In the visible footage, it looks like it is completely transparent, but, to the infrared camera, it is an almost perfect reflector. With the IR removed by the filter, we can once again see that the plants regain their green coloration. Just like visible light, the near-infrared part of the spectrum will reflect off most natural and man-made objects. So, people will easily show up in the camera, when illuminated with an infrared flashlight. This makes it easy to spot surveillance cameras, that have their own illumination sources. When viewed in infrared, this one is blindingly bright. While this certainly isn't a thermal camera, many strong heat sources, such as a candle flame, also give off a lot of light in the infrared bands. And you can see here, that when looking at this flame in the near-infrared part of the spectrum, the light output is actually more intense, than that from the visible range of light. Right, that's what this camera can do, let's now take a look at what's next, and how you can make one of these for yourself. So, now we have built this little thing, we should have a quick review of the high and low points of the project and its performance. Firstly, the built-in infrared LED is probably underpowered. The OTG mode that we are using is only able to supply about 500 milliamps, so this is always going to be a limiting factor. But for imaging objects that are within about 5 meters, it's probably fine. For imaging objects that are further away, you are going to need an infrared flashlight. It is a limitation, but, given that there is no zoom lens on the camera, distant objects are going to be very small within the field of view anyway. And finally, the camera sensitivity and resolution are not exactly world class either. 1080p resolution isn't going to get that many people very excited. But, this crude design, 
does have some positive points. The camera lens can be adjusted to have a focal length of only 5 mm, which allows it to focus on very small objects. I'm sure there must be some applications for that, and if you know of any, please do put your ideas in the comments. Another positive point is the removable long pass filter. This allows the user to choose if they want to view only the infrared spectrum, or have the visible portion added in too. The daytime images have a surreal quality to them, and an otherworldly feeling. This little gadget, isn't exactly going to be winning any design awards, but if you do want a copy of the 3D files in native SketchUp format, or as STL files, then feel free to send an email to the address on screen now. We quite like this format of a small smartphone gadget, particularly for imaging applications. Perhaps in the future, we will create some new types. Again, feel free to share any ideas that you have in the comments. So, there you have it, a miniature, key fob infrared night vision camera. Personally, I really enjoyed this project, it unexpectedly jumped to the front of our queue of videos, mostly because it is just so simple for everyone to make. Oh, and before I forget, here is a quick teaser for our next video. We are going to be making a pocket-sized, x-ray machine. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you think we deserve it, then please feel free to give it a like. And you could always hit subscribe, if you want to see more content like this. This channel doesn't have any sponsors, nor are we looking for any either. But, if you like what we do, and have far more money than you know what to do with, you could always consider dropping us a small super chat. We do hope, that you managed to learn at least one new thing in this video, and that your investment in time was rewarded. Time, is the only truly valuable resource we have. This is still a hobby channel, so we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time. You now have, only a very short time, to choose the next video to watch.